Hello, I am Dr. Marcos Campos, specialist in orthodontics. Hello, I am Dr. Daniela Ferreira, specialist in orthodontics. And today, our Home Band Fronteiras Orthodontia Channel has the honor to interview Dr. Benedict Wilmes. Professor Benedict Wilmes is professor at the Department of Orthodontics at the University of Düsseldorf, Germany. He is also associated professor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, United States. He has a prolific production, being author of more than a hundred articles and textbook chapters. He is also reviewer of several journals, as the Angle Orthodontist and the American Journal of Orthodontics and Dentofacial Orthopedics. Thank you, Professor Benedict Wilmes. Thank you. Professor Benedict Wilmes, your benefit system is quite effective and versatile. Could you tell our colleagues about the different uses of your system? Thank you for your question, Dr. Marcos. So what are, from my point of view, the major indications for using mini screws in the palate? Uh, of course, maxillary expansion and maxillary protraction. Uh, the goal is, of course, to avoid dental side effects in terms of tipping teeth and uh, if you are using class 3 mechanics to avoid mesial migration. Uh, distalization, non-compliance distalization, uh, non-compliance mesialization if you have missing 6, 5 canines, lateral incisors, even central incisors. Uh, what are additional indications? Molar uprighting, uh, molar intrusion, um, alignment of impacted teeth. Yeah? We can avoid touching uh, adjacent teeth and avoid side effects on these anchorage teeth. So I think um, these mini screws in the palate can help us in many, many situations. You have developed a protocol for treatment of class 3 young patients that present maxillary deficiency, which involves no use of face mask. Could you please explain this protocol and its advantages? Dr. Daniela, thank you for your question. So what are the uh, advantages of using hybrid hyrex in the upper arch? and the mental plate in the lower arch if it comes to early class 3 treatment. Um, <clears throat> in the upper arch we are using the hyperthyrex again to avoid dental side effects, uh, to get more skeletal response. In the lower arch we can use this mental plate because we want to offer a treatment alternative without the need of extra devices because um, some patients are not so keen on wearing, uh, wearing a, a face mask. Additional uh, advantage is that we see less <coughs> wide opening, <coughs> so the control of the facial and uh, vertical facial pattern is better using mini plates. We know this from Hugo de Klerk studies. Um, if it comes to bollard plates from Hugo de Klerks, I like them, good idea, but uh, I think the patients are too old if we are able to insert these plates from Hugo de Klerk uh, because the canines have to be erupted and this is the reason why we have developed the mental plate because we can start early and the second uh, major advantage is the failure rate um, if it comes to uh, the bollard plates failure rate is quite high um, and uh, the mental plate is much more stable. Uh, failure rate we have inserted around about 250, failure rate is zero. So this is uh, a very dense bone area in this mental area. Professor Wilmes, for adult patients who have maxillary deficiency, is it possible also for these patients to obtain benefits from your protocol of rapid maxillary expansion in association with mental plate? Dr. Marcos, thank you for this question. If it comes to um, treatment of adult class 3 patients, uh, I think the mental plate for class 3 traction does not make sense because there is not uh, much growth anymore. Uh, but 
In those patients where we have um, uh, still some growth, so if the patient are 14, 15, we can go for uh, this procedure because uh, as soon as we use the Aldramic protocol from Eric Liu, we expect more stimulation of the mid-phase sutures and we see some effects. Professor Wills, and for those class 3 adult patients who present developed maxilla and overdeveloped mandible, what's your preferred choice to treat these cases? Dr. Daniela, thank you for this question. What can we do in those patients where we have maxilla in the correct position and an overdeveloped mandible? Um, <clears throat> of course, we have to um, always have a look at the patient and um, the desire, the treatment goals of the patient. If the patient is unhappy with the face, with the profile, I think we will go for, or I would at least recommend surgery if the patient is happy with the face and uh, this is not the major um, problem. Of course, we can go for bicuspid extraction, but of course, it depends on the um, amount of um, the skeletal discrepancy. Professor Benedict Wilms, in your article, the T zone medium versus paramedian insertion of palatal mini implants in 2016, you provide some guidelines for better positioning of mini screws, depending on the proposed mechanics. Could you please tell us a bit more about these findings? Yes, how about the best insertion site? Um, <clears throat> we have uh, published this T-zone a couple of years ago and the T-zone is from our point of view the best area for parietal mini implants. This T-zone looks like a T, this is the reason why it is called T-zone, it's easy to identify we just have to look at the rugae and stay posterior from the rugae. And in the area of the bicuspids, we can go median or power median. In the area of the molars, you have to stay median. Uh, so this is um, how we find enough available bone in the palate. Um, <clears throat> angulation is also um, something we can think about however as soon as you're in the t-zone i think we are quite uh, safe we don't need a cone beam ct from my point of view we don't need a cephalogram all we have to do is look for the rugae and uh, stay uh, posterior professor benedict Wilms, you have published several articles about cat cam applications in orthodontics in each case do you think the use of this technology is necessary or can positively influence the outcome? Yes, CAD CAM, Dr. Marcos, is the future. Digital technology is the future. I think in a couple of years, maybe 10 or 20 years, our dental technicians are not going to bend anymore. They are sitting at the computer, they're designing the appliances on the computer and the Mechanics will be either printed or milled. Um, what are the advantages? I think uh, the advantages are you can take a scan in, in, in Brazil and uh, your appliance can be ma manufactured the next day in the US or in Germany or vice versa. So you don't have to send an impression from A to B. Secondly, you can design the mechanics and customize it. Uh, usually we are using wires, they're prefabricated. And for instance, if you want to design an expander, we need very rigid wires. And uh, only the sky is the limit if it comes to possible designs of these mechanics. For instance, for expanders, we want thick wires, we want high rigidity. So I think these are the major advantages of CAD CAM uh, mechanics, CAD CAM manufacturing of mechanics. Professor Wills, nowadays the orthodontists have one more tool in hands, the transparent aligners. 
For which cases do you think using this tool is more suitable? Dr. Daniela, uh, aligners is my favorite topic next to TEDs. I think aligners are the future and if I see brackets in the mouth of a patient, I, I always think this is an old technique and the future aligners you uh, can um, clean the teeth much better, um, the risk of carriers is lower and uh, we can finish the case easier. Of course, aligners have some disadvantages. There are a couple of studies published about this. Um, major problems uh, occur if you want to bodily move T's for distalization, mesalization in terms of space closure, expansion. Yeah? So in every case where we need uh, bodily uh, movements, aligners are limited. Um, so this is a situation where we combine aligners with our Benner slider, mesial slider or skeletally born expander. And I think this is a very smart and perfect combination. And the goal is that we can treat all our patients with aligners in the future. And for those cases where we need bodily movements, we are adding our mini screw appliances. So. Aligners has a future, I am very sure. Your passion for basketball is famous. How sports impact your life Consider your intense activities in research and clinical practice? Dr. Marcus, yes, sports is uh, my favorite hobby. Uh, actually, it was my, my job for a couple of years. I used to play basketball professionally. Uh, what did I learn from playing basketball? Of course, I learned a couple of things. I learned that you have to work hard, that you have to practice hard to uh, reach some goals. I learned that you have to play in a team. I learned to, to fail, to lose games and uh, you have to stand up again. And uh, at the next weekend, you have to uh, start from zero uh, and uh, the story starts again yeah um, so this is what i learned and of course i try to um, take over what i learned from playing basketball to my professional life as an orthodontist and as an orthodontist we uh, do fail we do have to play as a team and we do have to work hard uh, so i recommend to do sports for every adolescent, for every child, because I think we learn a lot uh, for life. Additionally, of course, if you do sports, uh, it may, may help your whole mind and your body uh, to relax, to stay in shape, etc. So I fully recommend to do sports, of course. Professor Benedict Williams. Tell us about your courses, projects and events. For those colleagues who desire to know more about your work, how can they find more information? So Dr. Daniela, what are our future pro projects? What are my future projects? Uh, we just started a digitally uh, orientated service. It is called uh, TEDMAN. A funny name, by the way, and um, what are the goals? What are the services uh, of TechMan? Um, the service should help every orthodontist worldwide um, to start with, with um, Anchorage mechanics. And um, the idea is similar to using the liners, similar to sending um, an STL file to Invisalign. You can send an STL file to, to TEDMAN. You can upload your STL file of your maxilla and um, mechanics. And uh, the insurgent side of mini implants is planned. Um, you can uh, approve this proposal from us uh, if it comes to position of the mini implants, if it comes to the design of the mechanics. And then you will receive one box with an insurgent guide and a digitally printed uh, appliance. And I think this is a, a smart combination that we get uh, a full service um, 
from just one uh, provider. Um, what else are the future projects? Uh, maybe you heard about it every year. We have a nice meeting in, in Düsseldorf. Uh, we call this benefit user meeting. We had so many outstanding speakers here. Uh, Beate Melsen, of course, uh, Sunji Sugawara, Hugo de Klerk, um, Ravinanda, I think everybody was in Dusseldorf. Eric Liu, um, One Moon, so many, many. I think the who, who is who of the orthodontic scene. Unfortunately, in 2020, we had to cancel it due to the Corona crisis. But in 2021, we will uh, have the next user meeting in June. So I like to invite all of you to come to Düsseldorf. It's a beautiful city. It's um, a big airport uh, here in Düsseldorf and uh, there are so many flights. Hopefully next year the, the Corona crisis will be over and we can travel again. Uh, so I like to invite you for our next year's meeting. We have Björn Ludwig uh, lecturing here, Marco Rosa, and many other super speakers and one of the major topics is the combination of aligners and mini screw born sliders um, and I, again as mentioned before i think this is the future because our goal is to treat every patient with aligners and um, because um, bracket uh, fixed bracket technique, I think, is an old technique from my point of view. So visit us in Germany. Uh, I would be very happy to see you here. And uh, thank you so much for your interview and the interesting questions. And I hope to see you soon somewhere in the world. Bye bye. Thank you, Professor Benedict Wilmes, for this interview. Thank you, Professor. Thank you.